How's it going, guys? Today I'm here with Nick White, and Nick and I thought it'd be a really fun kind of little video to make a mock interview. So we thought it'd be really helpful for you guys to see how we think during interview questions and, you know, kind of solve a question collaboratively uh, that you might see at a larger company. So today I'm going to be mock interviewing Nick, and we're going to give Nick a question in our coder pad here. So Nick, if you're ready, I'll copy and paste the problem description, take your time to read it, ask any questions, and we can go from there. I'm ready. All right, let's do this. So our problem today oops, goes something like this. You're given n pairs of numbers. In every pair, the first number is always smaller than the second number. Now we define a pair CD can follow any pair AB if and only if B is less than C. A uh, chain of pairs can be formed in this fashion. So that's not really English, but <laughs> basically you're asked to form different, like a, a chain from these pairs of numbers. And it says that given a set of pairs, find the length of the longest chain that can be formed. You needn't use up all the given pairs and you can select pairs in any order. So this is probably kind of confusing. So let's say yeah. we had <laughs> this input. And if this was our input, so again, these are just pairs of numbers, we would output two here. And that's because the longest pair or the longest chain that we'd be able to form from these pairs is one, two, and three, four. Uh, Does that make sense? Yes. So our input will be a 2D array, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Each element of this 2D array is going to be like a, a little array with two elements? Right. Okay. And we want to form, the goal here is, it looks like, given a set of pairs... Find the length of the longest chain. So that is what we want to do. Right. And a chain is... Okay, wait. CD can follow another pair AB. Okay, so these are pairs. So AB would be like 1, 2. And CD would be like 2, 3. And if 2 is less than... So if the ending one of, one of them is less than the starting one of the other one, that increases our chain... Correct. Yeah. So in this uh, case, if we tried to add two, three, we wouldn't be able to, right? Because like you said, two, uh, this two is not strictly less than, sorry, this two, this first two is not strictly less than this two. So it has to be less. It can't be equal. Correct. Okay. So that's why the chain length is two because it's one, two, three, four. Right. So that's why we'd return two because two is the longest chain or the length of the longest chain that can be formed. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. Okay, one thing I do have to ask, though, is this is, like, sorted, right? Good question. Uh, in this example, the pairs are sorted, but you can't guarantee that they will always be sorted. So you could be given these pairs in any order in reality, even though it's sorted here in this example. All right, well, that makes it a lot more tricky. So I guess what I, my, I'm thinking is, I mean... It seems like sorting is going to be pretty necessary here. Um, we want it sorted, right? Because we want things to be less than the next thing. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would do um, is sort. So can can we, uh, is there any way we could copy the method signature? Yeah, I gotcha. So let's say that we were asked basically to write a function called find longest chain. Okay. And, and we're going to be returning an integer second. of the longest chain, the size of the longest chain. Right. Yeah. So you could just return an integer representing the length of the longest chain you're able to form. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do, now that I know that, I'm just going to write int longest chain size is equal to zero. And then at the end, I'm going to return longest chain size because that is what we're supposed to be doing. Cool. So now we have to figure out how to get the longest chain size. Okay. So first, another thing is, like I said, this is better sorted. So I'm just going to sort this right away. Okay. Arrays.sort pairs. So we're sorting the pairs. Okay. With the built-in sort. Okay. Um, so if we have this sorted, then it looks like we could just loop through each pair like pair by pair through mm -hmm. our input. So if we loop through each pair, we could do like four pairs, no, for pair, 
in pairs. Um, and we need to extract the values from the pair, right? We need to extract start is equal to pair of zero. Um, wait, no, I don't wanna do this actually. I wanna do, I wanna go two at a time. So I'm gonna loop through two at a time so I could check against the next one. So I'm gonna go okay. i equals zero, i less than pairs dot length minus one, i plus plus, and then I'm going to extract these um, these starting and ending, ending boundaries from the current one and the next one. And maybe yeah. I don't need all these boundaries, <clears throat> but we'll simplify it in a bit. Sounds good. So the starting boundary is um, pairs of i, so that's the current pair as we loop through of zero. And then the ending boundary is gonna be pairs of i of one. And then for the next one, we're just gonna do i plus one, and we'll just call it next start and next end. Okay. Okay. So now we have the starting and ending of the current pair. So it would be like one, two would be the current pair when we start a loop, and two, three would be the next pair. To increase the chain, the ending of the first pair, which would be, you know, this variable, has right. to be less than the start of the next pair. So I'm going to say if, the condition will be if end is less than next start, then we would increment, that would be an increase in the chain because that's what we want. Okay. So okay. we would do longest chain size plus plus. And... If not, we would want to, what would we want to do? We would want to just keep going. This actually looks like it might work. Do you want to try running it maybe on this test case? Yeah, sure. Okay, so let's do that. So let's just call this function. Uh... Okay, so we want this to return, we said two. Let's see what happens when we run this. Mm -hmm. Nothing. <laughs> um, what is it saying? Cannot be cast comparable. Okay, so you, it looks like you're getting an error on line 21. 21, all right, let's see. Arrays.sort. <clears throat> um, is that like wrong syntax or can we not sort, can we not use a built-in sort like that on this 2D array? Yeah, so I think the problem here is that we need to tell arrays.sort how to sort uh, these individual oh. arrays. So because it's a 2D array, yeah. So do we have to use like some kind of comparator thing? Yeah, you could use like a comparator, a comparator or there's like a lambda function syntax too. Okay, uh, I see. Um, so is it is it like this and then return or no? No, it's not. I think you could put curly braces if it's like a multi-line thing, but I don't think you really need to. I don't even think you need return, but I think you I think you could put it. I don't think you need it though. Oh, okay. Um, so maybe we do. Oh, Minus these are arrays. The oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I, I was like, I thought they were the values. I was like, this doesn't really make any sense. All right. That makes yeah, that sense. would be more confusing. <laughs> um. All right. So if we, that is what I want. Yeah, this is right. <clears throat> so let's try running this again. Let's see what happens. You can run it too at the top left if you ever want to. Okay. So it looks like we're getting zero. All right. That's not good. Maybe I would, I mean, I would maybe try printing this just to make sure that this is sorting in ascending order, but I feel pretty sure that it is. <laughs> two, three, zero. One, two, two, three, zero. One, two, two, three, zero. Why would it be so zero? I think you're not seeing that last array because uh... of this minus one. And then I think the zero is actually just like the result that we're printing from the function call. Oh, so I, I think see. It's, yeah, I think I it's sorted, right? Yeah. Okay. What if we try and go back to minus one 
and then maybe we should see if we're ever going in here, right? Because apparently we're not, but we think we should be, if that makes sense. So we want a CEO, but I don't think we're going to, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know why it's not. It doesn't look like it's looping the last time for some reason. Um, oh, dude, I'm not even printing the other values. Okay, so that's right. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay, yeah, why wouldn't it be doing this? So next start. So if if end is less than next start and we're not seeing yo. So why would that be? And let's print end in next start. So what, the, what okay, also I need to figure out what's going on with what is wrong with what I'm doing. What I'm doing is Okay, so what I'm doing is saying end is less than next star. End is always going to be the current pair. Oh, so I see what's going on. Okay, so end. I, what what I what this um, solution is doing is it's looping through each pair, and end mm -hmm. is always going to be the end of the current pair we're looking at. But really, we want end to be the end of the chain because we want to increase the size of the chain. So we want to be comparing the end of the chain to the start of a new potential, you know, part of the chain. So right. yeah. we right. want, we, we don't want end to, we don't want to be, you know, this, this isn't what end should be. This is not, end should not be this. First of all, we're not even going to need start, it looks like. And it also looks like we're not going to need next end. We do need next start because this is the potential new add-on to the chain. Next start will always be the new potential add-on to the chain. And, um... What we need to do outside of this loop then is I need to I need to make the start like no 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 the end. I need the end to be like nothing or some okay. initial thing because the end should always be the end of the chain. Right. So to make it I mean I I guess I could just set it to null maybe. I mean that might make sense. Wait, no, cuz then if I set it to null then how do I initialize it in here? What is the condition for when it gets updated? Okay, if if I have the end, if end, oh, if the new part of the chain, oh, the end is always the end of the chain. Okay, so if end is less than next start, then we'll also update end. So we'll say end is equal to, pair, the, the new part of the chain's ending. So and pairs, okay. of, pairs of I plus one of one. So the end of that, that new block gets added onto the chain and then the end becomes the end of the chain. Right. Okay, so that makes perfect sense. Cool. So this is going to work actually. So the only thing I have to do now is initialize end. So to initialize end, can I just say... Um, integer and equals you know null so it's gonna work wait no because if if null is less than no it can't it has to be like min or something maybe this wait this might work right maybe let's see let it rip. So yeah, what I okay, yeah. And then we'll explain it I guess at the end if it works. Maybe hopefully it works. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> How the heck does that not work though? What? I think I think what's happening now is that you're starting you're saying, okay, my longest chain size is zero to start with, and you're only ever looking at the next thing. So, right, like, you're never considering the zero. The first like, one. Right. So, I think you either have to start this at one or change your logic so you consider the first link. I think starting it pair. at one makes sense because um, we're going to have to look at the next one anyway. I think right. starting at one makes sense because we're just starting with the first thing anyway. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Well, I think as an interviewer, I would say then, like, what happens if pairs is no or if, like you true yeah that's wrong have an empty 2d array or something okay well you could just put a conditional too i guess if you wanted to like cover that edge case that's true that. um yeah that makes sense uh 
Maybe we don't need to loop to... And maybe we don't even need to do this anymore. Can we just do this, though? Wait, if we just do this... Maybe this will work. If you just look at the current one. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, Yay, awesome. Because, yeah, we don't even need to look at the next one anymore because the whole, the previous thing is handled now by just en the end variable. Right. So that's just nice. always the end of the chain. You look at, you loop through, you look at the current thing, we make our end, we add this, you know, at first, end is mi the mi minimum value possible. So we say, okay, is the minimum value possible less than this? Okay, we add this onto our chain. Now this is the chain then end becomes the end of the chain, two. Then we look at the next one. Is n less than this? No. Then we look at the next one. Is n less than this? Yes. So this gets added onto the chain, and then the end becomes four. You know what I right. mean? So the end just right. keeps becoming the end of the chain. We look at the next thing in the array, the next pair, and say, hey, can we add this onto our chain? If so, n becomes the next end of the chain. We just increase the longest chain size. All right, so this is like some kind of like... Um, I don't know, you think, like, I don't know, dude. It's like a greedy algorithm? Yeah, I think it's probably greedy because you're <laughs> always trying to just take the next thing if you can. It's like something uh, like that. It seems like that, right. right? Yeah. What would you say is the, the runtime in the space complexity? Well, we're just looping through, so that is a linear loop, but we do to do the sorting up here. So we got that n log n, so you got n log n right there. Cool. But, nice. um, yeah, it's... That wasn't that bad. Do you think that's optimal? I think it is, because otherwise I think you have to basically... I think if you don't do this, I think you basically have to generate all the permutations of these chains. And then for each of those permutations, like check if it's a valid chain. I oh, think. dude, screw that. Or at least that's at the brute force, I think. So I don't yeah. think we want to do that. <laughs> no. Because that's exponential, I think, so... All right, well, That's not good. sweet. That wasn't that bad. All right, that was... It did get a little... That was more confusing than I thought. I thought it was super easy at the beginning, but... These questions um, are always confusing. Like, yeah, they're always tough. It's a little bit of trickery there, so... But yeah, I like right. that problem, so... Um, all right, sweet. What, is what about the space it, complexity? It looks like, that be? looks like there's no extra space, right? Yeah, I don't think so. I can't remember I'm what a radius dot sort of uses. Yeah. I don't think it uses merge sort. I don't think you have to worry about extra memory. All right, sweet. Um, on. So I guess that's it. Good stuff, man. That was good. Sweet. All right, guys. So that's going to do it for the video today. Nick, thanks for hopping on the call and making the video with me. Super fun. It's always great to work with Nick. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more of them, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more. Let us know in the comments below what you thought. If you guys haven't checked out Nick's channel, go check it out. He's almost at 40,000 people, which is literally nuts. It's crazy. He's going to have the second part of this in interview with me, where he actually interviews me on his channel. So make sure to go check that out. It's a we'll good video. He did very well. Really good. It's literally the best. Chef's kiss. All right. See you guys. Perfect.